Hi everyone, my name is Amitesh and in this video we're going to prove that this sum is infinity. 1 plus half plus one third plus one fourth plus one fifth etc actually adds up to be infinity. And you don't need to have any knowledge of math or math proofs. It's so simple and beautiful and I'm going to show it to you in a very small number of minutes. So let's just dive right into it. What's really cool about this is that these numbers are getting smaller and smaller. Right? It's one half, one third, one fourth. Eventually it's going to become one over million, one over trillion, etc. So you would think that the sum shouldn't get really large. But what this statement means is that no matter what number you give me, if you give me a million, a billion, a gazillion, whatever it is, you can add up enough of these numbers to exceed that number that you gave me. Okay, we can find enough numbers to add up to exceed that. And how are we going to actually prove this mathematically? And it's such a beautiful, elegant proof, and I'm just going to show it to you right now. Okay, so we don't even have to do too much to get into it. So here's the argument. And this is a famous series. It's called the harmonic series, as you saw on the board. So what's the argument of this is the following. So let's write out one plus half plus one third plus one fourth plus one fifth plus one sixth plus one seventh plus one eighth. Okay, I'm just going to show you the pattern and we'll see it from there. And this is a really creative math trick. Okay, so the first thing is, let's just try to add up some terms here. Okay, so we know that one plus a half is three halves. Okay, so there's nothing there. So let's just say, okay, this is one. You add up half, you're adding up a half. Now we're going to do something cool. Okay, it's going to generalize. We're going to observe that one third plus one fourth, what is that going to be? Well, that's hard to figure out. You know, if you actually try to find a formula for this sum, it's very tedious to just add up these fractions. We're not going to do that. We're going to be clever. We're going to be creative in math. So what we're going to do is we're going to say one third, it's at least one fourth, right? So whatever the sum one third plus one fourth is, it's going to be at least the following. It's going to be at least one fourth plus one fourth because one third is bigger than a fourth. And why we're doing this is it's much easier to add two fractions with the same denominator than it is to add one third and one fourth. I mean, at least for this case, you can do it, but as you get bigger and bigger, it's going to be a lot harder. And one fourth plus one fourth, well, that's equal to just two over four, which is equal to a half. So that's pretty cool. Okay, so one third plus one fourth is at least a half. Okay, now we're going to get really cool. We're going to get one fifth plus one sixth plus one seventh plus one eighth. So what's going to happen here? We're going to do the same trick and you'll see why we're, we're collecting these many terms. Okay, we're going to need more numbers, but we're going to still show they add up to something that's at least a half. Same idea. One fifth is at least one eighth. One sixth is at least one eighth and one seventh is at least one eighth. So we're going to get something that is at least one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth plus one eighth four one eighths, which is four over eight. Okay, so this is equal to four over eight, which is again equal to a half. Pretty cool. So we add up the terms one third plus one fourth is at least a half. One fifth plus one sixth plus one seventh plus one eighth is also at least a half. Now I want to go to the next pattern and I hope you'll see the pattern or you've already seen the pattern I'm sure is what happens if we add up, just going to erase this theorem from the board, what happens if we add up um, one ninth plus one tenth plus one eleventh and I'm just not going to write them down all the way up to one sixteenth. What's going to happen here? So again, let's try the same trick. Each number in this sequence of numbers we're adding up is at least 116. So if you're adding up all of them, it's going to be at least 1 over 16 plus 1 over 16 plus 1 over 16 plus dot 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 plus 1 over 16. How many 1 over 16s are there? So we've added more of them now than we did earlier. We've added 8 of them and that's strategic because 8 over 16 is equal to a half. So this is just going to equal to 8 over 16 which is equal to a half. Now you kind of see the pattern. Okay, so what the point is, is if we add up enough of the numbers each time, we can exceed a half. And even though half is very small, half times a big number becomes very big. So the idea is now that we're going to formalize this into a mathematical proof now. Okay, to show that this is the intuition. You know, maths, we don't just come up with a proof. We first come up with the intuition, we find this observation, and then we now formalize it rigorously. So here's the rigorous statement that we're going to do mathematically. And I'm going to erase this, or I'm going to erase it here, and just show you. So let's kind of erase this right, right here. Um, we're going to see what happens if you add the terms in the series. So this is a series of numbers you're adding up. What happens if you add them? 
going all the way from instead of um, you know one over two or one one over nine to one over sixteen, what if we go from one over two to the n minus one plus one? Okay, all the way up to one over two to the n. Okay, so we're going between powers of two. You notice that we added up one fifth up to one eighth, then we added up one ninth up to one sixteenth. Now we're going to add up one over two to the n minus one plus one up to one over two to the n. Okay, and what happens here? So how many terms are there? We're going to, this looks abstract, but the idea is the exact same as we've seen here. Okay, it's the same thing. You can think of literally n is going to be here, n is going to equal to 4. Okay, so you get 1 over 9 all the way up to 1 over 2 to the 4, which is 1 over 16. Same idea. Add this up, this is going to be equal to at least 1 over 2 to the n, plus dot 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 plus 1 over 2 to the n. How many numbers are there between 2 to the n minus 1 plus 1 and 2 to the n inclusive? How many numbers are there? Well, we know that 2 times 2 to the n minus 1 is equal to 2 to the n, right? And there are 2 to the n minus 1 numbers from 1 through 2 to the n minus 1. So how many numbers are there from 2 to the n minus 1 plus 1 through 2 to the n? Well, they're just going to be again 2 to the n minus 1 numbers because 2 times 2 to the n minus 1 is 2 to the n. So that means that this is just going to equal to 2 to the n minus 1 over 2 to the n, which is just equal to a half. So we can keep finding more and more terms that add up to something that's at least a half. Okay, we made the denominators the same to get a lower bound. And now here's the cool trick. So I'm going to write it here. It's kind of gone that far. So let's now write this down here. So what we're going to write is the following is we're going to make this really precise mathematically. Okay, so we're going to make it super precise. We're just going to say that um, if I have this sum, so I have um, the sum like, 1 plus half plus 1 third plus 1 fourth plus dot 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 um, all the way up to 1 over 2 to the n minus 1 plus 1 plus dot 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 plus 1 over 2 to the n. Okay, so what's going to happen here is between successive powers of 2, we're going to get things that are at least a half. Okay, so here we get 1 is at least 1, it's equal to 1, half is half. 1 third plus 1 fourth we've seen is at least a half, okay? So that is going between the two, going between 1 over 2 to the 1 plus 1 and 1 over 2 squared, right? Then you can go between, in general, you can go between 1 over 2 to the i plus 1 and all the way up to 1 over um, 2 to the i plus 1, okay? So you can go like that and each time you're going to get something that's going to be at least a half. all the way up to here, which is also at least a half. So how many terms are you going to get in total? Um, what is the lower bound that we get in total if we add up up to 1 over 2 to the n? Well, this is really cool. Well, we're going to get, you know, 1 half here when you add up up to 2 squared, okay? And then when you add up up to 2 to the n, you're going to get 1 half. So how many 1 halves are you going to get in total if you include this 1 half? I want you to convince yourself that you're just going to get, um, so here you have, up to 2 squared you get 1, up to 2 to the n you get 1, and here you have a half. So there are n numbers from 1 through n, so you're going to get n halves. Okay, so this sum all the way here, we can sort of erase this and we can write it this way. It's going to be at least 1 plus n halves. Okay, so we can write this as, this is going to be at least 1 plus n over 2. Okay, that is the bound. And what that tells us is that if we now let n go to infinity, so we can write this in summation notation, so I'm just going to do that here. If you write this in summation notation, then what we get is that as n goes to infinity, so we can sort of write it like this. I'm going to sort of say that um, because you sort of say that 1 plus half um, plus dot 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 plus 1 over 2 to the n, right? 1 third plus dot 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 plus 1 over 2 to the n is at least equal as at least 1 plus n over 2. Therefore, if you add up all the numbers 1 over k, so you can sort of say sum 1 over k, k varies from 1 to 2 to the n. This is just a notation to say we're adding up, you know, 1 plus 1 half plus 1 third all the way up to 1 over 2 to the n. That's just going to be at least um, 1 plus um, n over 2. Okay, so I'm going to write this here. It's going to be at least 1 plus n over 2. Um, and what that says is as n goes to infinity, so as we're adding up all numbers of the form 1 over k. Okay, so we say therefore the sum k varies from 1 to infinity of 1 over k is going to be at least, you know, 
what does 1 plus n over 2 go to as n goes to infinity? It gets really large. So this is just going to be equal to infinity. And this is mathematically, we say that the harmonic series diverges. Okay, So the harmonic series is this series. It diverges means it adds up to infinity. It doesn't add up to a finite number. So that's going to be the proof that the harmonic series diverges. It's a super beautiful proof. I really like it because it has this creative trick. You know, like in math, you've got all this information and you find this creative observation about making the denominators common and adding up to powers of two. I'm going to leave you with one more quick observation, which I think is super beautiful, which is what is called logarithmic growth. Okay, so logarithmic, logarithmic growth is actually what is happening here. Okay, so here, you know, if you don't know what logs are, don't worry. The idea is that you have to add up all the numbers from 1 through 2 to the n. You know, 1 over k, as k varies from 1 through 2 to the n, to get something that's at least 1 plus n over 2. Now, if you think about it, 2 to the million is a huge number. It's really big. Okay, but million over 2 is nowhere near as big. So it's kind of the sum is growing very, very slowly. It still reaches infinity, but very, very slowly. Okay, not all that fast. Um, and another way of saying this is that, you know, if you can sort of write it out this way, um, you can kind of write this sum. So I'm going to erase this on the board here. You can kind of write this sum as follows. You can sort of say that the sum um, k varies from 1 to n of, of, sorry, k varies from 1 to 2 to the n of 1 over k is going to be at least 1 plus um, the log of to the base 2 of 2 to the n over 2. Okay, so this is what I mean by logarithmic, logarithmic growth. If you know what log is, this is just n. Log 2 of 2 to the n. Log 2 of 2 to the n is just equal to n. So you're basically taking the log of what you're adding up to, and that's going to be a lower bound for the sum. Okay, so log grows very slowly. Um, if you know what that is, I've done videos on the graph of logs, so check that out. That's a very relevant video. You know, if you don't know what logs are, I'll have videos on them in my channel too. And links will be in the description when they're there. But graphing log, I've done a video. I encourage you, it also summarizes what logs are. So you can learn in five minutes, five minutes graphing what log is. I hope you love that video on the harmonic series, a really fundamental series. You know, if you do any kind of math, you know, even if you do calculus, you'll see this series. You know, if you go beyond single variable calculus, the first series you'll see basically. So I hope you love this video. You can master this series. Drop me a comment down below if you have any thoughts or comments. I really love making this video. It's really fun. Um, and I'm super excited to see you in the next video. Wish you all the best. Uh, I know all you know, YouTubers say to like, subscribe, etc. But my goal is really to help as many people as possible, to share my content with the world so that free accessible math education at all levels you know, is accessible to everyone. Every video I do is designed to be self-contained, you know, trying to assume as little background as possible. I believe this video can be understood by anyone. You know, we don't do any math if you think about it. No, no, nothing advanced, just adding fractions. You know, so all you need to know is adding fractions. So share with your friends, family, even outside math, you know. I hope that they can enjoy and benefit from this. And I have all kinds of content on my channel. So check it out. I wish you all the best. And I'm super excited to see you in the next video.